It's a minor miracle to still be standing after 30 years. So many of those people I started with uh, way back then. In Canada, uh, in those days, there was the National Film Board and the CBC, and that was the Canadian television production business. So like so many of us, uh, I had to run off to Los Angeles and uh, started working with a chap by the name of George Slaughter, who was a very famous producer who'd done Laugh-In and all of the Sinatra specials and Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin was iconic for producing these huge event programming shows and and uh, I'd made a couple little small experimental films on weekends uh, with buddies of mine and and George was starting a new show called Real People. Good night. It turned out to be a top five hit and was a gigantic hit in the States for many years. Anyways, I sent him these two little experimental films that I had and uh, out of the blue one day, he called me. It was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, I like your films. I'd like to pay you $10,000 a piece for them. I just about fell off my chair at that time. That was just an outrageous amount of money. Um, and he said, we should talk sometime. So I looked at my watch and thought I might be able to make the 5.30 flight to Los Angeles. And I raced home, packed my bag, and you know, flew in the next flight to Los Angeles. Got up at the crack of dawn, waiting for George to come to his office. And that day... Uh, he gave me a check for $100,000 as an advance to become a producer, writer, and director on Real People at the ripe age of 23. So that was many years ago. That's how it started. I was a rebel. I was a hippie out of the bread in the 60s. And uh, so with the backdrop of the Vietnam War and Woodstock and all those things, so some of the very earliest things I did were involved in, you know, news-oriented, investigative reporting-oriented stories, uh, interestingly enough, about the environment. So I worked with the Greenpeace people. I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I did the first film about acid rain, and, and I was really involved in uh, advocacy projects at the beginning of my career until it got kind of a little bit dangerous. We kept pushing the envelope further and further, and getting into more and more dangerous situations um, to the point where uh, I'd had a couple of threats in my life, in fact, doing a documentary about the Moonies, which was a cult that was very uh, militant at the time. And uh, so I came back to Canada, and I convinced everybody in Canada to do uh, uh, the story of Canadian rock and roll. So I literally left uh, that whole business behind and got into comedy, rock and roll, and, uh, and showbiz. Having uh, you know, looked back for a moment on 30 years, you know, we've reinvented ourselves many, many times. As the trends of television uh, have turned, you know, we've had to change as well. And uh, people's tastes and things migrate. And so you know, our first experience with a format, we'd had a lot of experience doing music shows. I produced the Juno Awards, which are the Canadian Brit Awards or the Canadian uh, Grammys. And uh, we'd done a lot of documentaries about music, had done a lot of concert shows with musicians. So uh, when American Idol became such a huge hit, and it was not just a huge hit in America, of course, it was a huge hit here in Canada, um, we were approached by CTV because of all our experience in music and live television. We'd done a lot of live multi-camera stuff. They'd approached us to see if we would be interested in getting involved in a co-venture to do Canadian Idol. And, so that was our first entree into the business, and it was a massive success. Um, it, it lasted for six years. It remains the highest rated Canadian TV show, I think, in history. The next Canadian Idol is... Eva Avila! It was such a big hit that we became kind of the go-to people for formats. So, you know, the Barnetts and the Endemols and uh, the Fremantles um, all started to say, hey, take a look at what formats we've got. And, and, um, and uh, we really started to learn about the business of, of formats and, 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 and the business of producing formats in Canada beside America, uh, which is very, very different than anybody else who does formats anywhere else in the world. We're starting Top Chef Canada, which is a, a, a terrific format. We had a big hit in Canada. I think the number one 
and number three show on the CBC with our own format. So we're developing our own formats now, and that was a show called Battle of the Blades. And um, it's a, a show where professional hockey players uh, are uh, taught and trained to become figure skaters. And in Canada, you're not a town unless you have an arena, and in each one of those arenas, in every town, in every community across the country, there are figure skaters and hockey players sharing space in an arena. So we took those two cultures and married them together, and now we're selling the format around the world. So. We're getting uh, geared up for that program. We're shooting a pilot right now, a touch wood, about another original format that we're partners on with global television here in Canada. And uh, we're crossing our fingers that that will go into production this fall and that we'll be on the mound at uh, MIPCOM selling that format. What's that about? Which we're very excited about. I, I can only say that it is music related in the workplace but I can't give any more detail than that. I don't want to jinx it until I get the darn thing picked up. The business has come back. I mean, certainly, you know, in Canada, uh, when the recession hit in America, the recession didn't hit here in Canada like it did in other countries, and our banking system didn't collapse like it did in other countries. But the American firms that controlled advertising dollars cut the Canadian advertising budgets back first, so we had an enormous recession in our TV business, uh, but that didn't happen across the board in the rest of our industries. So our real estate markets were still going up and everything else was thriving. You know, Global had gone into bankruptcy. CTV were facing an enormous expense with the Olympics. And the business in Canada was really stagnant. Well, that cloud is lifted clearly and they're really everybody's starting to spend money and they're commissioning a lot of shows and they're looking at all sorts of international co-production opportunities and... and uh, so there's a really, really great atmosphere now in Canada where I think we had a worse situation here in Canada than they did in the United States for many reasons. Well, certainly all of us are looking at the world of digital and, 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 and every project that we do, there's a huge element that has to do with you know, our content and how our advertisers fare and, 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 and the, all the different kinds of platforms that our content can be um, exposed on and and also um, uh, you know how to protect our business from what's happened to the music business which is incredible piracy and theft and we're certainly looking at that certainly one of the trends that we're seeing is that our content is being stolen um, another trend uh, which really seems to really uh, play out at something like the BAMP festival here is that everybody is looking to find partners. You know, there was a, a time where we'd produce shows in Canada, the Americans certainly would be myopic and produce programs not looking to get in, involved in the co-production business, and the same thing was true in Europe. And uh, we're finding now that, you know, because of the 500 or, um, I mean, million channel universe now, uh, that people are really looking f for... Uh, partners to share on the cost of creating the content and uh, and exploiting it internationally. So I, I just find like our phone is ringing in a way like it never has from production companies and broadcasters around the world more than it ever has. Um, and I, as I say, I think that um, you know there's a whole new world of scaling the cost of our content for a digital world, which is a whole different kind of experience. <laughs> The sales cycle for big drama um, takes a very long time, and it's a long development process. And uh, the last major drama series we had was Falcon Beach, and so we're very, very active in the, in the comedy business and in the unscripted business in both formats and formats that we're exporting. Um, but we're really, really hoping that within the year, we've got an enormous uh, mini-series project um, surrounding the origins of Greenpeace, which goes back to my early days as an activist. And I'm very, very excited about that idea. It's a very international idea. You know, the Greenpeace for us are like our Chicago 7 or our civil rights movement. It's like Canada doesn't have a lot of those kind of historic contributions that have um, had an impact on the world. But in the world of uh, environmental ad advocacy, uh, Greenpeace 
uh, we're certainly the leaders and in many ways the inventors of that, 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 that concept. So we're very excited about that. So I would like to say in a year from now, we would like to have a couple of more drama series on the air. We're very excited. We've been going through that arduous task of coming up with great scripts with great writers and I think that we're really getting there. So that's certainly something I'd like to see. I'm involved in the broadcast business. Um, there are two channels that we're partners on, the NHL Network which is a 24-hour hockey network, and, and, and we started a 24-hour fishing channel. So in a year's time, I'd like to have my third TV channel launched, which is another content vertical you know that I'm very excited. It's in the world of uh, animals, I will say.